Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Dream Team Tonic Podcast, episode 67. I'm Tony, and with me, as usual, my two amigos. Ben, are you there, Ben? Hi, mate. All right. All right, pal. And James, are you there? I'm here, Tony. Happy days. Um, I've got some beer this week. Don't know how I got through <laughs> last week. Sober, completely sober. But back to normal now, back to fully fit. So I'm back on the hill. Um, Get on it. Let's see, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. We've, we've got a, a busy night. Questions. We've got the Patreon Cup draw. Obviously, that Ooh. the uh, the group table, the group uh, stage came to an end last game week. So we've got that cup draw to do for the last sixteen, which I think everyone's excited about. Other than me, who didn't make it through, but hey ho, unlucky uh, mate. Yeah, it was a little bit unlucky. I, I blame Andy Barnett for that draw. <laughs> <laughs> um, Right, let's get cracking then. Well, like I say, lots to get on with. So let's have a look at our teams. And first up with the team, James, how's it going? Yeah, uh, 44 points so far this week. Um, Looking around, I don't think that's, I think that's pretty good. In fact, weirdly, my podcast team has been doing better than my other teams recently, possibly because, like I said last week, I haven't been dicking around with it. Um, I (laughs) won transfer made. Uh, which I did um, on Sunday. Um, I I brought in Matip. I had a feeling he was going to get Starman. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh yeah, James James to Matip was my transfer this week. Um, still got four left. <laughs> <laughs> um, in goal, got Mendy got me eight points. Trent got me seven. Cancelo minus one. Matip, we hey, thirteen points. Should have been sent off. Should have sent off the penalty, <laughs> won't it? Yeah. Let's, let's start on this sending offs and stuff. Everton were shit houses, absolute <laughs> shit houses of the finest, finest order. I, I reckon they drafted in Diego Simone to uh, give him some points, on, uh, tips on shit housery. I tell you what, that, <laughs> the right side of that Liverpool defence was struggling with that lad from Piggy Binders. <laughs> they? Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Body order and the peaky bladders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The best the best sorry, the best line I heard on the radio today uh, uh yeah, on the weekend was um Richarlison spending more time on the floor than a carpet fitter. <laughs> uh, I like that one. <laughs> it would have eighty-five percent possession, a Premier League record, and some Everton fans are complaining that they deserve to win the game. Um, I, I, I'm trying to, I'm honestly trying to look at it from, from both sides, <laughs> but come on, guys. <laughs> Could have been I a think different it, game if they got that penalty, though, couldn't it? I think you were, I think you were a penalty. Yeah, yeah I'll give you that. Yeah, mm. all right. I all think right. I think it it changes it a little bit as well. Um, like you said, Everton, they already touched the ball. They defended very well. They nullified Liverpool to a, a point. They were always going to open up on Liverpool, like the quality mm. told through. But it was a good performance from Everton. It could have been different. How many? Pa- it would have been interesting if that would would have been a red card as well for the push in the back because he's not made a play for the ball. Mm. So it's more of a um, what, what did we, who was it at the weekend? A bit Dawson, where he's pulled his he pulled the arm on Lukaku mm. because he's not actually made a play at the ball. It's more of a professional foul. It could have been a red card from Matip as well, possibly. <laughs> All ifs, buts, and maybes. But yeah, I I'm obviously wanting Everton to win as well because uh, of the predicament they're in with Burnley. But uh, it's one of them. Looks like Burnley are going to pull off the a late survival again. Yeah, doing well, Burnley. Seven points from from nine since Michael Jackson came in. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see, um, Alan? How, how many how many successful passes do you think Alan made in ninety minutes for Everton? It would have been many. I've seen it. Yeah, it was one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one kick off, in it. Eh? One from the kick off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've uh, never seen anything like it. It's crazy. Hey, uh, sorry we're going off topic here, but 
Did you see that that stat about Liverpool not not conceding a penalty for forty six games? Well, that's because we we're so in control of our defence that we don't um, we don't give up. You know, make stupid mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like Old Trafford back in the nineties. Oh, it is. God. You can't, it is. We won't get a penalty, Old Trafford. <laughs> Are you still sec- second on that list? Man City, 24 games about penalty conceded. <laughs> Need to start tracing these brown envelopes. It's going to have to be got 85% one. possession in a, in a game, you know. Not, <laughs> there is not many opportunities for the opposite, opposition to get penalties. <laughs> Ref didn't have the balls to get that penalty, did he? No. He, well, if balls. if it weren't a penalty, he should have sent him off. Sent Anthony Gordon off. Well, yeah. To dive in again. Well, it, there was he was there was a, he did brush him, didn't he? So that one wasn't as clear cut as the other yeah. uh, as the other Tom Daly effort. <laughs> 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 you got to do that when you've only got fifteen percent possession. You got to try, aren't you? <laughs> All the dark arts come out, don't they? Yeah. I've never seen Everton play play like that before. Bizarre, but there you go. Shall I shall I finish my team off? Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah, we got st- we um, stuck in the mat there, didn't we? Yeah, so it's forty four points in midfield. Um, Bilva got nothing. KDB seven, Diaz two, uh, Sterling three, um, Kane nothing, Salah five, Jota nothing. Happy days. Mm. On to my team. Twenty four points. Not a very good week. Obviously, the Liverpool back line, not having that, keeps harming me. Um, I made one transfer, Rudiger, who was pictured in a Real Madrid shirt this week. Or just <laughs> yesterday, was it? Which is a little bit uh, distasteful. Um, I took him out and brought in Sterling, uh, triple upon the City midfield. Um, and Ed- Edison in goal, zero points. Walker did not play. Cancelo, minus one. Thiago Silva got me eight points. Yeah. Chelsea clean sheet. De Bruyne, seven points. Bilva did not play. Louis Diaz, two points. Ryan Sterling got me three with a seven rating. Salah, five. Kane, another fat blank for Kane, who I did want to take out. I just I fell short on Monday, about Friday morning. And, uh, Thursday to Friday morning, I just missed the uh, price rise of money. And yeah. I, I, and then, I did, and then, because I'd missed that, I was just like, oh, "It's fate." I'm going to hold Kane. He's going to batter Brentford. That never happened. Hey, uh, he's got Leicester next week. Don't worry. Oh yeah, he managed to score four <laughs> or five against those, don't he? Loves Leicester. Dream, they just had a clean sheet. <laughs> yeah, another one. Yeah. <laughs> well, this Rudiger thing. Um, surely that was photoshopped, wasn't it? He, d- he yeah. wasn't wearing. We wasn't wearing a, a Real Madrid top. Yeah, it was um, Photoshop. Yeah, it's Photoshop, Tony. Well, Surely. he's as good as <laughs> he's as good as there. It seems to me. <clears throat> the, the, is he uh, Fabrizio not been on there saying here we go and all that with the contract and it's done? No, not yet. Uh, well, there's there's did, some strong rumours. He did say he did say that it's all agreed that that, that he's definitely going to Real Madrid. But there isn't anything like confirmed yet. I think that I think that I think that says everything about this injury. That's mm. all of a sudden cropped up. I, I think he won't play for Chelsea again now. I See, disagree. I, I think Rudiger is, a, is um, it, the way that he's been playing so far up to now, even though he probably already knew he was going to leave, um, says to me that he's a professional. And I think uh, I think he will play some, some of the remaining games. I, I, unless he's fallen out with Tuchel and Tuchel thinks I'm going to go with... Um, the guys that will be here next year, and that's but yeah. that's Tuchel's decision. Um, I, I think Rudiger will 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 do will play well if he if if he's given the chance. Do you think when he goes into a fifty fifty, he's not going to be thinking about next year at Madrid? With do you know what I mean? He's signing yeah. on the fee. <laughs> I I just think that, like we say about players being on the beach, you can't be more on the beach than when the beach is. Probably Barcelona's beach, and he'll be popping up to Madrid for his contract next season. <laughs> I don't, I don't think he's on Blackpool Beach, or uh, I mean, he's he's a uh, he's head somewhere else. Why would you play him as a manager? If I if I were managing Chelsea, and I know he's definitely going now, 
There's no chance he's signing a contract at Chelsea next season. I wouldn't have him anywhere near the first team. Yeah. I just don't see there's any gain for anybody in it. There's no gain for Rudiger. I know they pay his wages until end of the season, but... You might be right. I think if it was a bit tighter in the league, it, it might be a different story, but he might feel that he can afford to play because they have got some decent backup options. He, yeah. he might feel that he'd be better off playing some of the reserves and the well, you know, the likes of your Chavalas and your Sars, getting them yeah. up to speed for next season. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see, I guess. Yeah, one of them. Right, and the, and the last one in my team, as we digress again, is uh, <laughs> another of Chelsea lads, Kai Havertz. Um, who got a big fat zero? So not a great week so far for my team. Hopefully the uh, Cancelo's out during the week, isn't he? He's suspended, isn't he? For um, the, the first time. The first leg. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big, so, big blow. It is a big blow, especially Walker's not back fit. There is rumours that he might be getting up to speed, Walker, after that ankle injury. But this one wants to keep an eye on. So I might be two players short straight away midweek. So I don't think it's much is going to improve for this team. Ben, let's quickly go over to your team, mate. Yours, a much better week. Yeah, uh, 44 points, same as James. Um, Mendy and goal, 8 points. Robertson, 13 points. Um, Cancelo, minus 1. Alexander Arnold, 7. Mount, 0. De Bruyne, 7. Sterling, 3. Diaz, 2. I thought Diaz was a bit unlucky not to get a rating. Yeah. Uh, just missed out by 12.12. 12. Uh, Salah, 5. Kane, 0. Jota, 0. I did a transfer. I had Rudiger in my team and I was trying to get another Liverpool defender in, uh, Van Dijk, but he's very expensive, isn't he? I couldn't get to him. Yeah. So I looked at Matip, could afford him, just I was one point point one over to get him, but just with the rotation, and I wanted to get more attacking uh, Liverpool players in there, so I've got Salah, Jota, Diaz now. Yeah, I just need Mane now, and then I've got the front front four covered for any goals, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. But yeah, <clears throat> that's so basically Diaz has enabled me 1.9 million now, and if I want to sell like Sterling or Mount, I'll be able to be, probably be able to afford uh, Mares in the next uh, week with the price rises in that. Uh, and uh, I could I can afford Van Dyke, so it's quite a good move in the, in a way. Yep. Mares burnt this team, do you? Mares? Yeah. I had him I had him um at the start of the month, but when uh, he didn't start like, for two games consecutive, I wanted yeah. Trent back in my team. Yeah. So I brought Trent back in because he's more consistent. Yeah, uh, point scorer. He was a more consistent point scorer, wasn't he? But if you notice, Rob, Rob Robbo's been the the one mm. to have recently. Yeah, um, which is uh, it goes like that sometimes. Though Trent, Trent will be back, I'm sure. Well, he's still got seven points there this week, haven't yeah. he? Really? So yeah. I know what you mean. He's he is he's outscoring Alexander Arnold, but Alexander Arnold is, is consistent anyway with his assists and his clean yeah, definitely. Shoots. He is the odd yeah. goal. So. Yeah. yeah, you think he's the second uh, highest scoring player in the game, what, isn't he? I have to double check that. He is, yeah, yeah. He was <laughs> last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, days. still, still, still the second highest. Right, and from there, we jump straight into the questions. Um, there's a little bit, um, a little bit of similarity of the first, uh, say two, maybe three. Questions. We've got DT Patrick. Who do you feel are the best enabled picks looking at fixtures for May? Obviously, going going forward after this. Uh, Andy Barnett um, also touches on a bit of an uh, enabled player, saying when transfers reset on the 6th of May, from then to the end of the season, Everton, Villa, and Palace have a decent amount of fixtures. Are there any players from those teams you'd fancy for a cheek of end of season running differential? Um, you know, we'll touch on them two first, and then we'll come to Ashy's team. Um, what do you reckon, James? Yeah, so I suppose um, um, there's there's a few. I mean, v- Villa's fixtures are, are reasonable. Um, you've got Matty Cash there in defence at 2.3 million. Um, Davies of Spurs at only 2.9. D- 
Dawson um, suspended it for in the Premier League, but for for next week. But when we come around to May's transfers, he should be available again. He's only three point three, possibly stretching the enabler um, category there slightly. Um, in midfield, mm-hmm. I've got Kulusevski, uh, Bilva, and Diaz. Kulusevski's three point one. Bilva's 3.9 and Diaz is still only 3.7. So I think they're the, what would be my enabler mid, midfield picks. Um, <clears throat> I don't fancy any, anyone cheaper than that personally. Um, up front, I've got, I've got, um, dare I say it, Timo, <laughs> <laughs> 3.6. Um, but personally, I, you know, you've got Havertz at four point four one. I th- I still think Mane at four point seven still bloody cheap, yeah. really, yeah. when you consider the other players. So I don't know. I I would be particularly in the striker spots. I think I'd be trying to stretch to Mane if I was uh, looking for a cheapy. You could probably possibly downgrade Kane or or um, you know something like that. Or yeah. Um. Yeah, um, in defence, I've got cash, like you said. And then I see uh, Ryan Session Young played at the weekend for Spurs. He's only 1.4 million. Um, he's got two assists in his last three games, but obviously had a big miss. He missed a few games lately because of injury. And uh, he's, I don't know if he fancies Regulon or not. Um, Conte yeah. he seems to keep dropping him. Yeah, but yeah, that's 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 really pushing it really for defenders. Um, midfield, obviously with Villa, Villa having six games from now to the end of the season, and they've got Norwich at the weekend. I still fancy Coutinho to come good. Uh, he's only three point three million. Um, <coughs> you've already said Kulu and Diaz, and I got to say, me my boy KDH. Kian and Disbiel, two point five million. He just seems to play every game. He's not. He's the only, one of the only ones that's not getting rotated yeah. uh, in the uh, Euro for the Premier League after the Europa Conference games. And um, in goal, I reckon Martinez could do do you a job to the end of the season. He's uh, only two million. Yeah. What about uh, obviously Palace? With some decent yeah. enough fixtures there, uh, they've got <clears throat> Watford, Villa, Everton, and a nice easy one to finish with a United. Um, I had a look Gall- at it. Gallagher, two and a half million. Yeah. Or even the lad up front who's been uh, scoring a few, Mateta. Yeah, yeah he's, he's been um, rotated. He's been though, now. Started, um, started, started. Uh, he hasn't started the last few, has he? Um, you're best going with your best play, uh, strong players up front. I think, like you say, Mane's 4.7 million at that price. It's get him in, try and get yeah. him in. Yeah, just to uh, touch on the teams that um, Andy mentioned about the uh, fixtures. Um, and your, your mate, uh, James, Anthony Gordon. <laughs> Without him at two point three million, yeah, he's Everton's best practice. player, isn't he? Yeah. Definitely. I, I, I wrote. I mean, I've I, I rank those three teams, and I've got Crystal Palace, Villa, and Everton in that order. Yeah. For for Palace, I I think Zaha might be, but he's still relatively expensive. Four point mm. three. Do you fancy fancy a bit of Zaha? Not that price, because I think no. you you're, you're almost in ma- uh, Mane territory then, aren't yeah. you? What about the fullbacks? Uh, well, no, G- G- Gehi, uh, three point one, and Mitchell three point two. They they yeah. they've actually been picking up some decent points. They're pushing a hundred points this year. I like um, both of them. They're both good players. We've already done, been through the Villa options, and yeah, forget Everton. Well, it, I suppose if if you wanted to go Coleman, you could. They might. They, they look like they're gonna gonna. To stick to their shithousery when they when they go away now, <laughs> um, they might pick up some clean sheets. No Deli Alley. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Pickford's only one point six million if you're desperate for money, and he's got six <laughs> games left to the end of the season. But um, 
What's that noise? <laughs> oh, it's somebody scraping the barrel. Scraping the barrel. I, I recognise that from last week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not very good. But uh, yeah. about Gallagher, you see, it looks like he's playing a deeper role again now. Um, yeah, in more one. Obviously, there's a lot of attacking options at Palace. Eze, Saha, uh, Olise. Yeah. You've got Schlupp who play anywhere. He was centre forward when he came through at Leicester. <laughs> he plays left back, left midfield, centre midfield, plays everywhere now. He's been, yeah, he's been, he's been everywhere on his swap. Yeah. The ultimate utility man. Yeah. Which is probably what holds him back, really. Mm. Yeah, mm. but your best picking the 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 best attacking um best pick best picking um the best defenders from the best defensive teams and the best attackers from the best attacking teams, basically. Better stick away. Stay, stay away from the, this dross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Ash has put his team in. He might need a few of these. Um, his team's there. He's 100, 100 points behind first place. Uh, what players can he add to try and make ground? I'll read his team out. Uh, for the people listening, uh, it's Mendy, James, Alonso, and Silva. So, full Chelsea block at back. Mares, Mount, Sterling, Kulazeski. Up top, Son, Kane, and Salah. So, it's very different to what the teams you see. The guy in first place has got Edison, Cancelo, Robertson, Laporte, Trent, Diaz, De Bruyne, Sterling, Salah, Mane, and Kane. So, he's very heavy. City, Liverpool, complete polar opposite teams, really, other than Salah. And Kane, um, what do you reckon, James? Well, it's a tricky one, but I think being 100 points behind, um, and already balls deep in Chelsea with five, <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I think your best chance is actually to stick with Chelsea, given especially given that we're talking about May here, uh, um, because in May they've actually got a reasonable number of fixtures, Chelsea. Um, they're very favourable fixtures. Um, there's no point in bringing in any Liverpool and City to try and match up. You're 100 points behind. Yeah. I think I would stick with those. Stick stick with that team. Um, there's nothing wrong with it at all, really. Um, the, the only problem is if it is Chelsea out of Europe. But if you hold, if you hold towards the hold that team until towards the end of the month. You can then use your five transfers to uh, to load up basically on whoever gets through to the finals, etc. Um, so that, that's what I'd be doing. I think your best your best hope is to hope that Liverpool and City go out of uh, go out of the Champions League. To be fair, yeah, um, yeah, I like that, James. Um, pretty much agree with that. So keep keep your Chelsea if you want to go different. You keep your Chelsea back line. You've gone Mares different to him. You got Mount. You've got Spurs front three in there. So they've got Leicester next week. So expect goals for that game. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you should uh, be happy with that for the next few weeks, and then, like James says, reassess in a few weeks' time and see what you can do from there. It, the <clears> other guys' team set up perfect for the next couple of weeks, really. So. Um, but yeah, like Chelsea's results, they they could get a couple of clean sheets, and Liverpool and Chelsea, could, uh, sorry, Liverpool Man City could concede in the Champions League, and so what? And you could gain on on him in defence there, and with your Mares as well, so your Mount. Chelsea's got loads of games left still, even though they're out of Europe, they've got games in hand to play. Yeah. So yeah, do you think Tony? I completely agree, both of you. I, mm. I think he's got the differentials in the the, the yeah. Chelsea block at the back. Um, obviously, it, it's, it takes some doing to catch hundred points from here, and yeah. especially with the the guys' team. But if Liverpool and City do have a bit of a stumble and they go out of Europe, you, mm. you don't know. You don't know. And if Spurs find their uh, their form back with because uh, they were looking devastating at one point, weren't they? Them them front front three. So always not lost, but it'll be very very tough from their ash. Um, yeah. But you're not about one, a sneak. Quick one, you could uh, get Jota in there as well. 
uh, he'll be differential for you. If he'll have extra games on Spurs. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously yeah. if he starts he's gonna get rotated anyway with, with Diaz and Mane, so Yeah. I think if it's one of them that Yota, you'd have to take it if you're gonna do the Yota move, you'd take out Kane, wouldn't you? And leave Son and Kulazeski because you need the differentials. Yeah. Or you you yeah. just hope that Kane just keeps dropping deep and feeding Son and Kulazeski. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's you, you are clutching at straws a little bit, but you know I've, 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 it's doable. Yeah, well, like this week in FPL, I went, I did a free hit, and I didn't put Trent or um, Reese James in. I went and Alon- Alonso and Robertson, <laughs> and obviously this yeah. week they 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 went off and the other two didn't. But yeah. that's what, that's like that's what could happen till the end of the season. They might score more points. Yeah. You're going to need a few weeks in a row where it yeah. all goes in your favour. Yeah. Good luck, mate. Yeah, good um, luck. Right. Um, Port and Poker. Apologies, it's been asked before. I think I think we did have one of these last week, I think, uh, as I'm a newbie. Are there any aspects of Sky, Fancy Football or FPL you would like to see added into Dream Team, e.g. points for starting? James? Well, I don't, I don't play Sky. I'm relatively familiar with roughly how it works. But um, the only thing I would add from FPL is the technical team who run it. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that's a great shout. Um, it is pretty slick. They don't get many things wrong there, do they? No, it, they rarely, I've been playing it for a very long time. Um, they've had a few cock-ups over the years. And one year, many years ago, they had to sort of restart from game week one in game week two, or if, I can't remember exactly what happened, but yeah. But generally, it's pretty damn solid. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, let's not make the games the same. That'd be boring, wouldn't it? So uh, there's nothing in FPL I would add. I don't want chips. I don't want captains. Um, no, nah, forget that. So what do you guys think? Um, I'd definitely be interested in maybe. Uh... A couple of points for starting the match, maybe because obviously when you've got a player there, it started the game and he gets a zero. Mm. It's a bit, a bit of shit really, but um, yeah, I, li- I like I like the starting points. There's loads of things that I like in other games, but I don't really want to like bring all them into Dream Team. Yeah, you might as well just put, play in the other game, the FPL. If you want FPL rules, play FPL. It, 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 it is. It's got its own thing, can it, Dream Team? Where it's it's one on its own. You get the European games, the scoring's the way it is. You don't want to you don't want to make the games too similar. Otherwise, you you're only you're going to just end up with one product rather than three games to enjoy. So, yeah, we do. It gets asked a lot, doesn't it? It does get asked a lot. Um, but yeah, there you go, Porn and Parker. I I I they used to have on the Dream Team before. I used to get a couple of points for um, a clean sheet for midfielders. And they scrapped that for um, assists because they didn't have assists in the game before. I won't mind the bringing the clean sheet points. Maybe one point for a midfielder getting clean sheet. And uh, I also like um, in other games they've got tackle bonus, pass bonus, shot bonus. Uh, but I'd o- I'd also like to see um, maybe goalkeepers get uh, points for saves because. Yeah. Like the goalkeepers will have a blinder and they'll only get five points. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Good point. The ratings, the ratings don't back it up sometimes. Uh, it'd be nice to get extra points for that. And then, uh, and then it'll ena- enable um, cheaper goalkeepers. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Pickford would be an option then. <laughs> yeah. Food for thought, isn't it? We'd have to see what what, uh, what things they bring in for next season, whether there's any changes like that. Um, Steve Bro, Cov, is it better to have different teams in different mini leagues? I've been stung this year using the same team as one league I was flying, but the other I wasn't. Kept my eye off the ball. Now I'm trailing in the second league. Well, James, as somebody who usually plays one team every mm. year, this is your first year playing multiples yeah how have, you, how have you found it in different mini leagues it's a tricky one actually yeah um 
there is something to be said for concentrating on one team. However, I would know I'm not gonna. There's no way I'll go back now to having just one team. Um, I think it makes sense to mix it up a bit personally, um, mainly because you can then make tactical moves, like you can make blocking transfers and things like that for that specific league. Um, I think it gives you a bit more freedom. The, the problem, of course, is when you've got a team that's you put a team in that's doing really well in one league, and then you think, "Oh, wish I wish that was in that league." Well, you can't, you can't have it all. Yeah. Um, I mean, one thing I've noticed is some of the top players they they ha- they'll have ten teams, and all their teams will be very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, I think it was last year. Was it Leah Allett who had? sort of in the top 10, top 15, you think he had like four or five teams and they're all very similar. And if you think, and I've always thought, why would you do that? But then if you think about it, it gives you the ability to sort of mix and match things, doesn't it? And bring in, and if you've got those teams in different leagues, you can then make blocking moves, etc. But only when you need to. So, um, yeah, I, I personally think having make sure if you're in like myself i'm probably in five different leagues um i think you need to mix the teams up a bit um to give yourself you know spread the odds a bit and then of course it gives you the advantage of being able to do those tactical transfers and blocking moves etc definitely definitely ben yeah definitely you need to get different teams in different mini leagues you might have noticed i've got uh, a different team in the patreon cup to the uh, patreon league (laughs) <laughs> so I can concentrate and do different moves to to try and win the games. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah I noticed somebody in Sky last year. He, he obviously you can only have two teams in Sky, and he kept his two teams pretty similar. And he was in the top five or ten. I can't remember now, but he kept them pretty similar right until the last few weeks. And then I think he differentiated to try and yeah. to, to to try and win. Yeah, like two two attacks in it. I mean, yeah. two attacks at the title. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah. what Lee Allett was trying to do last year. That would be I'm, I should ask him actually because um, mm. I've got it. I've got I'm, I follow him on Twitter. So, but yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's why he does, why he did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to say um, this week I've I've uh, differentiated with two teams that are doing really well in the mini league, and I've kept kept Kane in one, and I've gone Man in the other, just to see if, like yeah. to cover both bases. So like, mm. I've. If one goes off, then at least I've done well in one team, and I can push on with that team. Then, yeah, good, good strategy. Yeah, yeah definitely. It, it's hard sometimes, isn't it? Like you say, when you're looking at one team, you think, "Ah, oh, pissing hell, I should have put that one in that league and this that mm-hmm. other." Your your hope is that you put five different teams in five different mini leagues, and they all do well. And, yeah, and then you're all right, aren't you? But you, you invariably, you're going to get. Um, some teams doing well, some teams not so well. Especially if you go with blocks, early doors. Depends which block uh, gets off to the best start and where you try and switch across from. But yeah, it's all with them. All with them, Steve. It's just how it goes, mate. But you're better off just sticking to different teams in different mini leagues, I think. And obviously, Ben and James are agreeing in that. Fitzy, I finally decided on the big question surrounding Harry Kane. I got rid of him for money. So I now have Salah, Yotta, Yotta and Mane. Would you advise to get Diaz as well to have all four to make most to make the most of Cop's rotation and all four players' explosive form? James, I'll pull man over to you. Well, I think it depends on who you're actually taking out, of course. But um, as a principle, yeah, no, I think Diaz is a good option, and um, obviously Liverpool is still in. They're in the FA Cup final. They're still in the Champions League at the moment. They've got the fixture volume. They're fighting for the title. Um, yeah, I, I, I've got no issues with um, with the quadruple up in that respect. Definitely. Yeah. Bam. Yeah, I think it's a great tactic. Uh, definitely get the cover. Like, look at Diaz. He came on 60th minute, played 30 minutes, got a, an assist. Like, he'll probably play in midweek, start the game and then, for example, Jota might come on and play 30 minutes. So they're all, they're all playing, they're all getting involved. So it's a good idea, cover all bases of the Liverpool attack. We've got the most games left. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, completely agree with that. Completely agree. 
like you're saying, they're doing the damage even in the short minutes, the sure in time, but they're always dangerous. Liverpool aren't they? they look great, great again this year, so it's an absolute no brainer. Um, right, Matt Woolley, who's uh, up, up the top, fighting um, in the main game. Despite his minus one scoring, the not so friendly derby, his money becoming essential. <laughs> um, what's his what's his uh, his form is eight points, eight points, zero points, ten points, seventeen points, and then minus one point yesterday. So sixteen, thirty three, forty two points in his last six. Um, I think that is becoming essential for him in my in my book anyway. Um, at four point seven million, cheapest chips, cheapest chips. What do you reckon, James? Well, I think if you go back to when this increase in form started, it was because Jota and Firmino were, you know, were out injured, um, yeah. and he played he played Manny as the number nine, and it worked. Um, so his his form is massive. His output's massively increased since he'd been playing, you know, more centrally. Um, I suppose you could argue that with Firmino you know, nearly back, you know, not far off, nearly back, Jota back now, he, his minutes are going to be reduced there. But he's been success; it's been a successful ploy by Klopp. So I would, I'm still expecting Mane to get minutes there as a number nine, but probably not as many. So I, I suspect there might be a little drop off, but I still think Mane is a really good option. Yeah, I think as soon as we see Diaz, if Diaz starts, I think Mane plays through the middle. If Yotta starts, Mane's out wide. I think yeah. obviously Yotta and Diaz are probably going to be the two sure in the minutes more more often than not. Mm. But yeah, I still think he will get minutes though, you're right, I reckon. I reckon Ben. Yeah, it's tough to say he's essential, but um, definitely worth getting him in your team with all the fixtures they've got now. Um, yeah, he's he's been been on fire. Definitely, uh, look look at getting him in. Yeah. Right. Across to Aaron Wade, who's been on with his team. Two transfers left, and he's twenty two points behind his rival. What to do? He has the better team. He states. Uh, he's got zero point one in the bank. His team is Allison, Trent, Robertson, Cancelo. Bilva, De Bruyne, Diaz and Sterling. Salah, Havertz and Kane. His uh, rivals team is Alisson, Trent, Van Dijk, Cancelo, Ben White. Bruno Guimaraes, um, your mate James. <laughs> uh, Kev De Bruyne, Mason Mount. And then up top, he's, he's got the trio of Mane, Yotta and Salah. Um, oh. go, on, go on, Ben. I just wanted, I forgot, I was going to mention it before. Bruno Guimaraes, right? In his last four games, he's got four star mans. Wow. That's uh, so annoying, that. Yeah, three goals and one assist. Mm. He is flying at the moment, but obviously the fixtures go bad for him. He's two, only 2.4 million, you know, when we're talking about the enablers. Yeah. Um, He had an eight, a 17 against Leicester, 10 against Palace, and a 12 against Norwich. He's got City and Leicester, uh, City and Liverpool next up in it. Or Liverpool yeah, City. that's the problem. The fixtures are getting really tough now. So he's got Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal, Burnley. That he's only got four games left. Yeah, mm. it's uh, it's it's praise one to note for next year. Yeah, obviously he's a bit of a star man magnet. Um, <clears> yeah, <throat> some going for in a row. Some shout from his rival. A bit, he'd be pissed off if so put put Bruno in the team. You <laughs> you're trying to close him down. I mean, to be fair, if you took Bruno's points away, probably Aaron were probably leading. I would, would say, be, yeah, yeah. That's a frustration. I don't want to be boot, uh, beat, beaten by a Newcastle midfielder, but here we go. What, what, what do you reckon, James? Let's sort it out for him. Well, I think I think actually the teams are fairly evenly matched. Although I do prefer um, Aaron's rivals' front line because um, he's got the he's gone for the Liverpool triple up. Um, but he's also got Bruno Gramirez and Ben White in his side, which tells me he's struggling for budget. Yeah. Um, I don't think Ben White's a great option. He's, I suppose you could say he's a, an enabler, but, but your, I think your team's probably more better balanced. 
Yeah. 22 points is absolutely nothing. You can do that in a week. Um, so there's no need for any rash moves or any sort of um, Bruno Guerreras like differentials. <laughs> oh, hang on. Uh, no, but uh, no. As we were saying, his 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 fixtures are going to toughen significantly. So his his output will drop off, and your your mate probably will keep him because he's he's um, unless he you know unless he looks at the fixtures and a lot a lot of people do they just they're just, they're just for, you know the, the average fantasy football player will just look at the form and there is an argument to say that is a better way to play in some respects but um, I, anyone that's into their fantasy football checks the fixtures out if he's so, no, if he's no budget James he's struggling isn't he? yeah exactly that's what I'm coming you know, that's what I'm trying to say I think uh, I think you're in a strong position to win that with being only 22 points behind with a few, with the whole of May to go another week in April. Um, I'm not going to recommend any transfers at this stage because I think you need to look at, see what happens in Europe, but there's come back to us next week after we know a bit more, maybe, you know, Um, I don't think there's any need to panic. And like I said, I think, I think Aaron's team's actually better balanced. Yeah, definitely. Ben? Yeah, totally agree. Um, you've got the Man City midfield. He has he's only got one Man City midfielder. Um, yeah. you've got him covered anyway, uh, but he's got the three Liverpool men up front. But you've got uh Luis Diaz in midfield. So yeah, I think you've got a decent team there, mate. Nothing, nothing to worry about. Uh, definitely have another look next week. Maybe. Maybe you could jump off Havertz because he's only got one game next week, but it's he's playing Everton, so it's, it's a tricky one. What do you think, Tone? I, I think, obviously, we can't do it uh, this midweek, uh, so mm. we should know how the Champions League games lie uh, by Thursday night for Friday morning. Um, why not just why not just cover his... If you cover his Liverpool front three, I'd fancy the rest of your team against it. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. mid, that I think we 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 spoke to somebody uh, last week who yeah. had a, a heavy city midfield. So just let city let, let the city midfield win the game for you because depending on what his budget is like and how many transfers he's got left, I'm just going to take it on the value that he's used his transfers. He's not got much budget because he's got Ben White and Bruno in his team. Mm. I'd put I'd put Mane and Yacht in and have the Liverpool front three yourself. You've got Diaz as a differential. You've got Bilva and Sterling. And against Ben White and Bruno Guimaraes, I'd, 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 I'd fancy that. Yeah, I'd bet. On, I would. I, I'd, I'd back that heavily if I if I was a betting man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, Aaron. Your team is going to end up with just City and Liverpool in it, but they're the team, <laughs> the two best teams, are the teams that are they're the ones that are, are getting all the points. So that's what I'd do. Um, obviously, depending. If if Liverpool get an absolute tonking against Villarreal, it might change it, but I can't see that happening. And I think I, I think both I think my view is there'll be an English all English Champions League final because I think they're the two best teams in Europe. Um, yeah. Good luck, mate. Good luck. Right, Adam Jenko has been on. Yes, boys, listen to you every week. Question is, next month, should I be looking at loading up on Liverpool and City players for the Champions League final, or should I still keep some differentials? He's changed, He's chasing a 38-point gap for the top four, and he's sitting in ninth. Um, his team, for everyone listening, is Edison, Alonso, Cancelo, Matip, Sterling, Bilva, Mount, and De Bruyne, Jota, Salah, and Havertz. What do you reckon, James? Well, I'm assuming he's used all this month's transfers because um, he's, you know, he's looking mm. asking about May. So I don't see any need, any rush to move away from those Chelsea players, given given the fixtures in May they've got, um, which I previously said are very favourable. Um, obviously, you need to keep an eye on those Champion League semis. Um, I think you can f- afford to hang fire and wait and see what happens. Um, I would say I would be holding for now, and I don't think there's any rush. But obviously, things might change midweek. Um, if obviously, if some, one of the English sides gets knocked out, but uh, yeah, hang far, see what see what happens. But no, no immediate fast to put out there at all. To keep keep hold of some of those transfers. I would. Yeah, 
Ben. Yeah, there's not much not much uh, to do there really. It's a good team. Um, only players um, I'd maybe look at changing next month for Havertz, for Mane, and Alonso for like Robertson if you can afford that. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a good team. Just just keep keep an eye on the fixtures, see how the Champions League semi finals go. Yeah, you obviously got to because you're in ninth. You've obviously got what five five teams above you, four teams above you. Mm. Uh, before obviously in that fourth place, so you, it's not one where you're going to be able to. You're not firing up one person off, so you can't concentrate on one person's team and start putting in differential players to their team. I think you're just going to can concentrate maybe on accruing as many points as you can and getting the best players in there. Uh, so Havertz to Mane would be a good start, and I, 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 like like Ben says, probably Alonso to Robertson if budget could afford. Um, but yeah, decent team. Nicely balanced, and as James says, Chelsea got some decent fixtures. Like in May, it's yeah. not what it's not one where you, you don't be rushing, don't be rushing away from them because <clears throat> they could be the differentials that that boost you. When do you think? I mean, I haven't looked at this, but just just a thought. Obviously, if Chelsea tie up that um, that third spot, yeah, um, at that point, you you know, it might be time to if you still got Chelsea, then it might be time to to move away because obviously they've got, they'll have nothing to play for then. Yeah, uh, assuming they get guaranteed third, they're not going to get first or second. So keep obviously keep an eye on that one as well. I'd say it, it could be one where they, they probably don't tie it up until the Wolves game, say, and then and then you then you're tied into the Chelsea players then for for the midweek game. Yeah, uh, which would be a bit of a ball eight. But if they if they turn United over on Thursday, um, and then they've got Everton at the other weekend. If they win both of them games, I, I, like you say, they probably then rest a few for the, the, the Liverpool Cup final. Mm. Um, you probably start seeing a hell of a lot of rotation. You might see Lukaku back on pitch. Hey, they might invite Rudiger back for the farewell game. <laughs> um, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah. But once, even Kepa might get a run out. Well, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's the type of, uh, type of uh, selections you'll probably see. But yeah. Uh, Kerry Jones has been on. Quick question regarding the end of Premier League game week 38 and Champions League. With the Champions League final being on the 28th of May, should Liverpool and Man City reach the final? Would this be a single fixture in a new game week for some dream team? Thanks, lads. On James? Yeah, it'd be a new game week as it falls after Friday the 27th. So, um, yeah, let's hope uh, dream team update the scores a bit quicker than last year after the final. <laughs> I think that, that that'll enable us. Obviously, if you if you save five transfers, then or if you save four transfers, or however many, you could bang them all in on that last last game. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I you, that usually doesn't play out as you'd hope it would in my experience. It it's nice to have one or two. Um, arguably, I think you'd be waste if you kept all five, unless you had a brilliant team that you're totally happy with, you'd probably yeah. be wasting it just to, to, to use all five on one game. But some people do that. I I think I might have used three or four before. But you'd only leave that many if you were really confident with your team, I think. Mm. Yeah. 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 Be interesting. Right. Um, obviously, we're in the lead up to the... Uh, the Patreon Cup draw for the last 16. Um, so there's been a bit going on on Twitter. Frank at FF Stuff uh, is, is asking if we can set him up with a bye. He actually means against Dan Cox in the next round of the Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, That's a bit harsh. Dan's <laughs> doing quite well now. He is, uh, ever since he came on the pod. <laughs> uh, he's been flying, actually, Dan. So he, he's, he's, he's replied less of that, mate. He's back on it with his son. So let's see. Let's see. Be hmm. nice to... Uh, be nice to see if they draw each other in the uh, in the round of sixteen, or see if they're going to get each other. So let's get to it. Let's get the uh, the cup draw on un- underway. Right, basically, I've got a mixing ball with some pieces of paper in here. <laughs> James, are you going to write them down for me again? Oh yeah, yeah. That'd be a good help. It'd probably speed it up a little bit if I were to stop to to write it down each time. You don't have to write the team names. I've got all them. 
Yep. Now, if you just want to write the manager name, that'd be good. Right, good shake. Good luck to everyone involved in the uh, the last 16. You two are in this draw, aren't you? We are, yes. The first one out is Mike White, Fred West Ham. I'm playing Mike White in the round of 16. Is that man who's just been mentioned, Dan Cox? <laughs> Next game up on the on this side of the draw. Hey, Andrew Ferguson, Fergie time. Oh, James Fricker. Oh no! <laughs> I, I had a feeling I was going to draw Fergie. Oh bloody hey, hell! Hey, that's going to be tasty on pod next week, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. He's Brilliant. on next week, isn't he, Fergie? Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Be <laughs> Next out, <laughs> <laughs> we've got Connor Tobin flying without Ings. And then we've got Mark McKee, more corrupt than Blatter. Oh, next up, Ben Lee, Dream Team Tonic Pod C. We home draw. <laughs> <laughs> that means you two are on the both on the same side of the draw. <laughs> oh. And facing Ben Lee is Ryan Fitzsimmons. Fitz is eleven. All right, we're on to the other side of the draw now. And we've got Mark Tavares, the dream team. Got that. Got that man, Matt Woolley, for Liverpool City FC. Number two on the leaderboard. Number two. Absolutely flying, Matt. Flying. Still got Frank in this draw, aren't we, somewhere? And here he is. Frank, FF stuff with worms. So maybe Frank might be meeting Dan in the final. Facing Frank is Paul Young with the Young Guns. Next up, Sean Siddall. Ball bag seven. Facing Sean Siddall. Patrick Bryson. And the final two. So if your name hasn't been called yet, you, you should know who you are. Wayne Foster Crouch. Adidas, Adidas trainer freak. And last, but certainly not least, is John Mellier in it to win it. And that concludes the draw for the uh, round of 16, the Patreon Cup. Uh, good luck to everyone who's involved. Um, like I said, I can't wait for next week on, on the pod with James. <laughs> Tasty looking ties there. Um yeah, we'll get that up. I'll get an image put up. I'll get that posted onto the Patreon group on the Discord um, so you can see your route to the final. So you can try and work it out. Uh, obviously, all the team names will be on there so you can keep an eye on, on the scores. So, yeah. Tony, does that mean that Fixture 1 fixture one will play Fixture 2 in the quarterfinals? So on. 3 yeah. will play 4. Yeah, I'll put, the, um, I'll put the brackets up. I'll put the, what's, you know what it's called. I'll put the image up on on the uh, Patreon group so you can see see your route. Excellent. Um, yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, we'd be drawing it every week. And yeah. I, I just thought we'd draw, draw it that way, and, and we'll see. We'll see. So, yeah. Good luck. Um, should be exciting. 
That'll be Long good about. next week with the banter between Fergie and James uh, midway yeah. through a fixture. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Let's see a few mind games going on. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's jump into the the league, the league table. Um, Dream Team Tonic Cash League top ten. Um, go on, James. I'll let you do the honors this week with this one, mate. Seeing as I'm going to be doing the beer job one. Okay, in tenth we've got Michael White, Fred West Ham. In ninth we've got Ben Lee. Hey. In eighth we've got Ben Lee. Hey. <laughs> in seventh we've got Alex Cole. Six, Andrew Ferguson. Fifth, Heath Robson. Fourth, Kerry Jones. Third, Steve Legg. Second, Dan Sherwood. And still at the top, Alex Cole. Brilliant. It's flying that team of Alex Cole was actually, I think, he's really high in the leaderboard. Yeah, he's, he's, he's in the top 10, I think. Yeah. Um, shows how competitive it is. Right, across to the uh, Patreon League. I'll read this out as I do every week. Um, in 10th, we've got Paul Young and the Young Guns. In 9th, Andrew Barnett. In 8th, James Fricker. Yay. In seventh, Sam Course. In sixth, Connor Tobin. In fifth, Michael White. In fourth, David Dunkley. In third, Stephen Broughton. In second, Ben Lee. Yay. And up at the top, the new leader this week, Paul McNally. On one one three six. Uh, good score. Um yeah. That's the uh, those wrapped up. Obviously the trophy should be en route. Should have a, a a few images of trophies that are on offer, obviously for the cup, the um, the uh, DT Tonic Cash League, um, and the others. So we'll we'll have them, uh, we'll have images of them soon, so you can see what uh, all the fighting's been about. Um, as ever, obviously we appreciate everyone who supports us on the Patreon. Um, if you if you if you're listening, and you've not you've not joined us on the Patreon yet uh, to support us. Uh, please do. Uh, I know, obviously, it's it's getting to the words the end of the season, but we'd love to have you involved next year, if not this. Um, and that's over at patreon.com forward slash Dream Team Tonic. Um, just to show you support for the guys and, and, the, and the time and effort we put in. But it's great to have you listening. Um, cheers, James. Cheers, Ben. Thanks so much for uh, spending your evening with me. Cheers, Tony. Cheers, mate. And uh, we'll speak to you shortly.